Hello, and welcome again to another episode of Learning HTML. We've got our web page up here, and I just briefly finished showing you how to use the anchor tag and the three ways to use the anchor tag. So what I want to do next is actually uh, add just a little bit more to the bottom of a page here. I'm going to do some images, show you, show you how to use comments in your HTML document as well as creating tables. So back here on the web page, we do have some documentation down here at the bottom that talks about images. So when we link to an image, we can attach images to our web pages that we've created ourselves. So if you took a picture and you downloaded it from your camera onto your hard drive, then you can feel free to use those pictures inside your own web pages. But you can't just go to the web and take pictures that somebody else has put there because they belong to someone else. So what you'll see here at the top of the page is an area that talks about the image tag. So we're going to be use the IMG for image tag and it has one attribute called the source which is spelled SRC and the SRC stands for, well it stands for source and we have the value of the attribute which is going to be the name of the image. Now you can see that this entire image or this entire value here is actually a website address directly to an image stored on somebody else's website. Now since we don't own the image and since we don't own that website then we shouldn't be linking directly to it because it's known as stealing bandwidth. So make sure that you only link to folders or images that are stored on your own computer or up on your own web server. So we're going to be using a very simple uh, method in order to insert some pictures. So the very basic use of the image tag, again the IMG for image, SRC is the source and it is equal to the name of the picture that we're going to save on our hard drive. Now in order to get a picture, there's actually one at the bottom of the CP102 web page for HTML1, so I'm just going to scroll down, we're going to cover some of this material. And you see right here that there's a guy of uh, a picture of a little hacker and it's supposed to be moving. He's not moving now, but he will be very shortly. This is one type of image found on the web known as a GIF file or a GIF file, which stands for a uh, graphic interchange format. So I'm going to actually right click and I can choose save picture as. Now this picture is on the CP102 website using it for educational purposes. So feel free to try this on your own computer and use this image in your uh, practice. So I'm going to save the picture into my uh, home directory and it actually you'll probably save it into your my your home your home directory in your iDrive, my CP102 folder in the HTML folder and you see that it's been given a name hack anim a n m for uh, animation dot g i f so it's a save as type is a g i f so the name of the file specifies which format it is because there are three major formats for images used on the World Wide Web. That's a GIF format, the JPEG, and the PNG or PNG format. So this is a GIF format and you can't convert one to the other just by changing the name. So I have to remember that this is called hackanim.gif. So I'm going to save it into my HTML1 folder and now it's been saved. I'm going to go into my PSPAD file and at the bottom of my PSPAD file I have a paragraph here that says visit the Golden Hawks. And I'm going to just put a new line here and I'm going to add, before I put my picture, I'm going to add another tag which you might find interesting, which is called the horizontal rule. So I put in my angle bracket, HR for horizontal rule. There are actually a few attributes you can use for horizontal rule, but I'm going to ignore all of them for now. And I'm going to close the HR tag, the horizontal rule. Rule just stands for line. It's another word for line. And the uh, so I have my forward slash there. So that's going to put a silver line all the way across our page just to kind of separate the content from one area to another. Now in this particular location I'm going to put a new paragraph and inside the paragraph I'm actually going to put my image. So I'm actually going to put this on a new line and press tab so it's nicely indented within because uh, in, the image is going to be nested inside my paragraph. The very basic use for the image tag, image space, then the name of the attribute is SRC, and then the value of this attribute has to be the name of the file that I want to use. And do you remember what that file was? It was hackanmhackanim.gif. Now I'm actually going to show you what happens if I say JPG. So let's say that I thought it was a JPEG file ending in the JPG file extension. So I'm going to save my file 
And I'm going to go back to my web browser and I'm going to hit refresh. And I can see that I get this little silver line going all the way across. That's good. That's my horizontal rule. But now I have this red X. Now this red X indicates that's where the image is supposed to go. But the image is broken or it didn't work or it didn't load properly or it's got the wrong name. And in fact, it has the wrong name. So I'm going to go back to my PSPAD file. You can change this from JPG to actually GIF. Now you might think that I could just change the name of the image to JPG back on my hard drive, but it's not a JPG, it's actually a GIF file. So putting the JPG file extension won't work either and the computer won't display the image correctly. So I've changed the file name to what it's supposed to be. Control S to save, Alt Tab to go back into my web browser. And I can hit F5 to refresh and there's the hacker. Look at him go, he's typing. Now, the one special thing about GIF files is that it allows for this animation to appear on a web page in a single image. So it's actually an image with multiple frames, and the web browser moves from frame to frame, making it look like there's animation going on. Now, if you leave this web page open for too long, the, eventually the hacker stops, and uh, it won't be animated anymore. So that's one thing I can do. A couple other things I can ch do to change this link around, or change that image. I've got my image here. Oh, I forgot to close the paragraph tag. And you can see that by leaving out that closing paragraph tag, it was not required, but it does work out very well to make things more readable to have the closing tag and the opening tag together. If I wanted to center the image, you might have heard about something called the center tag, but HTML doesn't require or accept the center tag anymore. So what I'm going to do is, now that I have this image inside a paragraph, I'll use the align attribute of a paragraph and I'll say it, this alignment to be equal to uh, centered. Now, center is spelled the American way, and you'll find that in HTML, a lot of things are spelled the American way instead of the Canadian way, because it's an, it's an American standard, an international standard, and they've chosen to standardize on American spelling. So I'm going to center this image, hit Control S, go back to my web browser and see what it looks like. Refresh. And now that hacker picture is centered on the website. And now using a little, here's another secret technique. If I go back into my page, I'm going to actually make that hacker a link to another website. And if we remember when we talked about anchor tags, then the way to make a link is by putting the image in between the starting anchor tag and the ending anchor tag. So if I put a starting anchor tag here, Anchor, anchor space href equal to quotation marks http colon slash slash got to put in the http colon slash slash www.google.com.ca quotation marks angle bracket so that's the starting anchor tag anchor space or the a tag space href equals now this image will become a hyperlink and then i close off my anchor tag so that looks right. Everything appears correct. I'll save that. Go back to my web browser. Hit refresh. And now you see that the link, this image, now becomes a hyperlink. It's got a little border around it. And you can actually set that border to disappear by uh, leaving an attribute called border equal zero. And we'll see that when we look at tables. But it's still a border attribute. And you can see if I move my mouse over the little hacker, it shows me the Google website. It's going to open up and I can click on it and I go to the Google website. And just here's another little secret technique. Remember when I showed you about the view source menu. If I choose view and I choose source, then I can see the HTML pages that make up that or the HTML tags that make up that web page. It just kind of disappeared there for a moment. But uh, you'll see that this is a little bit confusing because Google really knows what they're doing about web pages. But if you look close enough, you can actually see different tags. Maybe not there. That's a bunch of JavaScript code. But you can see tags, and you can see attributes and values, all with quotation marks and a whole bunch of different stuff. So don't ever forget that you can always choose View Source. And even if you go back to the lab web page and choose View Source, then you'll see the HTML tags that I use to make up this web page and the web HTML pages that I use are actually a little nicer formatted.
than uh, you might find in other places. So that means it makes it easier to read. And that's one way that people learn HTML is simply by looking at the HTML code of other people's pages. So I'm going to go back to my tab here. That's where Google was. And I'm just going to go back to my main page. Here's the 12 Caesars by Suetonius. And we have our little hacker typing away madly. Now, another thing I can show you is the use of comments. So I'm going back into my HTML document. And the use of comments is important because it'll leave messages for you about information you maybe wanted to leave inside your web page, but you don't want other people to see necessarily, or they act as nice reminders. One of the things that we're going to use a, the comment for is to include our name and the date that this page was created. So in the head of the document, which is where you would you leave information that is about the web page but doesn't get visible and uh, in fact it doesn't actually matter but co because comments are not visible to the user anyway they're not visible on your web page i'm going to include the uh, angle bracket and to begin a comment you use the exclamation point and two dashes it's a little unusual but you can see that now that i've included an comment we have uh, the whole page is turned green because now from the beginning of this comment all the way down to the end of the page it will be commented and so the page will actually disappear i'm going to actually show you that and see what happens if i if this might display right on internet explorer i'm going to save it with an incomplete tag go to my web browser hit refresh and oh, luckily it's still saved there but if you check it out in firefox you might see something a little bit different but i'm going back to the 12 caesars page here and uh, I'm back in my comment. I'm just going to put uh, the date, which is uh, August 24th in my case. And I'm also going to include a new line and the author, which is me, which is Rick Henderson. And you can also put your student ID number there. Whatever that happened to might that whatever that might be, and then we have our closing comment tag, and our closing comment tag is a little unusual still. It is two dashes, so that's our starting comment tag and our ending comment tag. Could be all in one line, could be in uh, multiple lines as you see here. But now this page or this doc this comment will not be visible when I view the web page. I'll also prove this to you uh, again by just putting down here inside the paragraph where our hacker is. I can put in another comment. Or you can leave notes to yourself. Try to replace it later. And we put in two dashes, and that's the end of the comment. So it leaves a nice little comment there. You can come back to it later and make changes as necessary. Saving my page, going back into my web browser, hit refresh, and nothing changes because comments are not visible in your HTML document. One final thing I'm going to show you is the use of tables. Now, on the web page for HTML1, you'll see some information about tables, just like there's some comment information and more info about images. So make sure you read all that. You'll never want, and just by the way, I might as well mention it, never have the absolute file reference or path reference to your images. So when you create a web page, you should never, it should never say C colon backslash or D colon my documents. Those should never appear in your web page. You should always link directly to the image using what are known as relative path names. So an absolute path name lists the name of the hard drive and then some different folder names maybe, but a relative path name uses names of folders from the current folder, or you can even use the two dots to go back up into a previous folder. But really, the best way around this, if you're not familiar with the Windows file structure, then just use the name of the file as the picture and simply link to documents that are in the same folder as your web page. That's the easiest way. So we have some information here about tables. And tables were originally developed to show data on your screen. But for a while, people were using them as layout. We're not going to use them as layout, but when you study HTML further, you'll learn about cascading style sheets and cascading style sheets are used to lay out document elements on a page so in this table I have column 1 and column 2 and we have first cell second cell and third cell and fourth cell so it goes from left to right and from top to bottom now instead of uh, typing all this in manually you can actually just copy the tag but I I will explain how these tags work so we have the table tag it sounds like kind of like of a kind of like a game actually 
We have the table tag with the attribute align equal center. So this table will be centered in the page. But if you want it left aligned on the page, then don't put align equals left because that actually causes items underneath your table to shift upwards and you usually don't want that. So if you do want anything to be aligned left, especially as a table, then just leave out the align attribute. Don't put align equals left unless you want things from the bottom to shift upwards. We do have a border attribute with a value equal to. And then we have a couple of other tags. And you can see that these tags are defined down at the bottom here in this table definition. We have TR, which represents a table row. And our first row of the table, which is going to say column 1 and column 2, contain column headings or table headings. So TH stands for a table heading. And by default, the text is going to be bold, so you don't have to bold it yourself. So we have TH, column 1, and then the closing TH tag. We have column two with an opening and closing TH tag. And then we have our closing table row. So this ends the first row, and we move on to the second row. So you can see that this group of TR tags it defines a single row. And a TD for the first cell stands for table data. So it's the first cell in a table that contains data. So that's just the name that HTML uses to make a cell. So we have our first cell, then we have our second cell, and then if I want a third cell, I have to create a new row. So please look at this structure. Make sure you know how to create rows and columns inside your HTML tables. So a column could be made by adding an extra TD tag, and it's a closing tag, into each table row. So I can copy this HTML tags, right-click, choose Copy, move back into PSPAD, and underneath that paragraph where the image is, I'm going to simply paste in my table. So that's what it's going to look like. File, save, go back to my web page, refresh it. And I can't see it, but my page did get bigger, so I'll scroll down a little bit. And there I see my extra table placed right at the bottom. So I'm going to go back to my, uh, my PSPAD editor. And I'll just, choose, I'll just show you what happens. One of the border attributes, you can, the attribute you can change is border. If I set the border equal to zero on this table, file, save, go back to our web browser, hit refresh, then you can see that the border lines disappear. And this is how people are able to use tables in order to help lay out information. So you could put an image in one cell and have text beside it, which is an easier way to get text beside an image, which can be difficult in different aspects of HTML. And if I go back into PSPAD, simply change the border to 15, hit Save, Control S, and I go back to my browser and hit F5 for refresh again, then now you can see that that outside border got a lot bigger. So play with that. You can see how big you can make it, which is kind of interesting to see. And I recommend you try that for yourself and see how far you can go. So that's the use of tables. We've covered comments. We also covered images and hyperlinking. And that will be the very basics that you'll need for creating any type of web page that you would want. In the next set of videos, in next week's material, we're going to take a look at creating different colors and having different types of animation on your web page. So I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck on making web pages.